Dear participants, first of all, I want to thank the ministry for inviting me here. It's an honor and a pleasure to come and have, have the presentation for you. Uh, I have now worked at the ministry for nine years, first very much with the uh, Blackman Learning and Adult Education Policy, then with higher education, and for the last year I have worked at our permanent secretary's team. Permanent secretary, I think it's the same as state secretary in your ministry. And now, uh, for the last year, I have done basically what I have been told to do. Uh, but in a very general sense, my, my task is to, to support the ministry in knowledge-based uh, decision-making. So, if I may have the... Oh, I can use this. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I have many parts and many slides in my presentation, but I will not try to go into detail into each. So I will, I will concentrate on the first three ones, maybe the third one mostly. But to start with some, some words about the Finnish educational system. So, first of all, we have a, a one year pre primary education starting at the age of six, then nine year uh, basic education. After that, uh, upper secondary education, either uh, general upper secondary education or vocational education. And around 53% uh, uh, continue to general education. Uh, less than 50% to, to vocational education. But anyway, almost everybody continues after basic, everybody, almost everybody completes basic education in Finland and almost everybody continues their studies after basic education. But not everybody completes upper secondary education. I will come back to that later. So after uh, upper secondary education, there are two higher education sectors, the more traditional universities, and then uh, the more professionally oriented universities of applied sciences. In universities, actually, the master's degree is the kind of basic uh, degree. So students are chosen mostly, almost always, directly to, to master's programs. In universities of applied sciences, the bachelor degree is the basic degree, but there are also master's programs after that. And of course, doctoral, doctoral studies at the universities. Uh, then we have a very large sector of uh, liberal adult education, that, that's non-formal education, not leading to a qualification. Uh, after upper secondary education, there is severe, severe competition to, to higher education, especially to universities, and especially to some of the most popular programs like medicine, uh, law, business, and also teacher education, as was mentioned already in the previous, previous uh, presentation. The kind of basic principles of our education system are flexibility. There should be flexibility in, in uh, kind of uh, going on with the, with the educational paths and also inside programs. There are no dead ends. It is always possible to continue. You can also from the vocational education upper secondary education, uh, it is possible to continue to higher education and many do continue to, especially to uh, universities of applied sciences, not much to universities. There are equal opportunities, but have to say that not totally equal outcomes. And that is one of our challenges, of course, now and, and has always been. But of course, compared to many other countries, the situation in Finland is not that bad. Uh, one of the basic principles is also lifelong learning, meaning especially that it should always be possible to come back, to return to the system, no matter what the reason. Maybe the studies have been interrupted or, or you need uh, more competency working life and so on. So we have uh, opportunities for adults actually in all of, the, all of the levels and all of the sectors in our system. Starting from basic education, for example, for in, uh, immigrants, uh, large sector of vocational adult education, we have open university education. So, it's possible to come back. But we do have uh, challenges too. Uh, this text is very small, but I will, and I will just uh, point out some of, some of the uh, challenges we have. 
some of them have to do with the educational attainment level of our population, especially first the share of, uh, of young adults aged 25 to 35 years uh, with ter tertiary education, with higher education degree, has not grown for several years. 10, 15 years ago, the share was at the top of OECD countries. Now we are around the, the OECD average level. Uh, the other thing is that the, uh, the, the very well agreed policy, policy uh, uh, goal or target in Finland is that everybody finishes at least upper secondary education. And like I told you, almost everybody uh, uh, starts upper secondary education, or a very large share of, of young people start upper secondary education. But still, we have the situation that of 20 to 29 <coughs> year olds, around 15, 16 percent are without uh, any uh, qualification after basic education. And that has been the situation for, for many, many years, and it has not changed. And this is one of our challenges. Uh, of course, we, were, we heard already about the visa results, and, and, and Finland is still quite close to the top of the countries. But uh, uh, there has been a drop in literacy and numeracy skills among young people for several, several years and several rounds of visa now. And also, one of the worries that we have is that uh, there are wide learning gaps uh, uh, between boys and girls, for example. So these are some of the challenges we, we have at the moment. We, we still can say that uh, our education system is good, but, but we always are ourselves also very critical of our own system and, and want to, to make it even better. Well, then to, to uh, this uh, policy part, I, I want to say a few words about futures reviews that are done in Finland every, say, every, every four years, once during an electoral period. Uh, we did have a, a parliament election last spring, and after that, a new government, and with, with a new government program in June. <coughs> so, but before that, uh, we, each ministry made its own futures review and in, in these, exploiting national and international research and indicators and so on. And the reviews are part of uh, ministry's joint foresight activities, underpinned by common foresight and common drivers of change, about which we heard actually in the previous presentations already. They are very much, of course, the same in Finland. Changes in technology, work, demographic change, uh, challenges of democracy and, and political participation and so on. And the, uh, these futures reviews are uh, prepared by public officials, not uh, steered by politicians. So this is, uh, we, uh, we uh, public servants, are the ones who kind of uh, prepare these, these uh, futures reviews. And these reviews assess global trends and projections and situations in Finnish society and examine especially issues involving political decision making. And the aim is to generate public debate and provide information for the next government uh, formation. And in, that, in addition to these uh, uh, separate uh, ministry reviews, the permanent secretaries of, of the ministries uh, also published their own kind of review, which kind of put together the, the reviews of the different ministries. I will not go uh, into detail of our, of our uh, own futures review, just a few words. Well, we, when we started to do this, we started by thinking, what, what is it that we aim at, really? And what are the important issues? that uh, affect our work and, and what we want to affect or have an impact on. And we defined three key issues. They are both, uh, they, they are both aims and at the same time they are our means for success, kind of. And we decided that there would be competence, which is quite obvious, and then trust, uh, 
Finnish education system is, is very much based on trust between teachers, the government, uh, the, the administration in general, between parents and schools and so on. And, and the Finnish society can be said that it is very much based on trust. Uh, if people trust each other, they trust the institutions, people also feel well and I think the nation can prosper. And there have been some uh, signs that worry us also about this, this kind of trust. And then meaningful life. We started to think that this is really what we aim at in our ministry, to give uh, people the uh, possibility to live a li meaningful life. That means give, give the possibility to learn, to get employed, to work, to have cultural activities and so on. So this is something that we thought a lot, whether this may sound naive or something like that, but, but then, then there was kind of a good consensus in our ministry that this, is, this can be our aim. I, I, have to, I want to emphasize that we didn't, didn't try to define the meaning of life. This is about meaningful life. So. Uh, and then uh, I can say that, uh, of course, we, we can tell uh, beforehand whether this, these reviews can, will affect the next government program. But this time I, might, I can say that there are same things that are in our future review we can find in our new, new government program. So, uh, then go to the, the actual uh, strategic education policy documents in Finland. Uh, before 2015, we used to have these five-year development plans for education and research. And the first one was uh, uh, prepared in the beginning of 1990s, and, and there were six uh, development plans in, in total made. Uh, and these, of course, were also made, they, these were made usually after the new government and new government program, and at least partly based on the government program, but prepared at the ministry, and of course, like everything in Finland, in dialogue with the stakeholders. Uh, the stakeholder involvement meant, for example, that there were, uh, in 2011, there were uh, about uh, 200, from almost 200 organizations, we had written comments for the draft of the plan. <coughs> and documents, uh, they were criticized uh, about a bit, uh, of course, from some people a lot, about uh, that the, the, the targets set in the plans, they were very different, they were small, um, small goals, very wide and large, large target and targets and goals. Uh, and they were not uh, clearly enough uh, defined the resources needed to achieve the targets or the measures needed to reach the targets. And also that that because the, the plans were usually set up like in, in part by part from each educational level and sector treated separately, kind of. Basic education and then upper secondary vocational and general education, higher education. So there was criticism that the plan did not form a clear enough or coherent uh, whole. But anyway, I'm not sure whether that was the reason, but anyway, the, the previous government that we had, uh, 2015, decided in general that there are too many uh, uh, policy documents, uh, guidelines in the government, not only in, in the education sector, but in, in, in general. And they only had, they decided, decided not to do this, this plan. And the only, the kind of starting point for, for us uh, public servants was the government program, which was quite short compared to, to some previous ones, only, <coughs> only defining uh, kind of key objectives and key projects, so-called key projects, to, to develop them. And there was some difficulty after that for us to start, start uh, the policy development work. And of also uh, because there was not very very clear on, on what to do, and also things came up 
that were not defined in the government program that were noticed that would be needed also. For example, the, that I mentioned here, the vision work for higher education and research. That was something that was not mentioned in the government program, but still started by the decision of the, of the minister. So, now we have a new government program, uh, which is of course, again, a starting point for our policy work. And it's more detailed than the previous one. Uh, there are four main objectives, but uh, quite many, many uh, more detailed measures defined. And also, the uh, government has decided, based on the uh, government program, to give a government education policy report for the parliament. I will go come back to this uh, in more detail shortly. So, uh, shortly, very shortly about the, the government program and the main uh, objectives for, for education. There are four, four of them. The one is the level of education and competence. The second, uh, well-being of, of uh, children and young people. Uh, equality and att attractiveness of Finland. Um, there are some quite big reforms actually defined also already in the government program. One of the biggest ones is the extension of compulsory education, meaning that the, we now have the, uh, the school, uh, the compulsory schooling against at the basic education. But the compulsory schooling age will be raised to 18. That is the decision of the government now. And that work is, is in progress at the moment. So, uh, well, I think, of course, uh, we monitor also the, the, the progress of the government program, but I will not, I will skip this, I think, and go straight to the, the government education policy report. <coughs> and now, the starting point, uh, the starting point are the uh, four main objectives from the government program. Not, and we try to do this a bit differently, not starting by each level and each sector separately. But we take these, these uh, big goals as a starting point, and of course we have to deal with each, each sector and each level also, but we try to kind of create a narrative of each of the targets. For example, of course, the, the level of education and competence, there is a story to tell. It starts with early childhood education and preschool, uh, Education. What happens there affects how, how children do in basic education. How they do in basic education is, of course, crucial to, to upper secondary education and so on. So this is how we uh, try, to, try to do this. Uh, and the, the, the subject of this uh, policy report is really the whole education system and also research. And emphasis will be on, on concrete policy measures, what we have to do to tackle to the challenges that we have. And the target is around the year 2030, but also would like to look beyond that. <coughs> and we, we are very busy with this also, and, uh, and uh, it should be ready by the end of, end of this year, which is not, we do not have that much time really. And there are great expectations about this, uh, this, uh, this, this report to become a major and significant policy document with a long-term impact. And that is, of course, the challenge to look, really look not only for this government period or the electoral period, but further. And of course, you probably have the same situation in all countries that the pressure from the media and the public is, is very uh, for, the, for, for immediate results and, and fast results, it's, it's very, very hard and very severe. So, but the government really wants to, to look ahead a bit further. And during the process, there is wide involvement of stakeholders and experts, like there is in Finland every time we have, every time we plan and, and do a reform or change legislation or, or whatever. whatever. At, the, at the moment, a virtual brainstorm is open for, for all citizens. 
uh, to answer and give their ideas of what should be done. Also in English, if you want to <coughs> look at it or comment even. Uh, the, there are school visits. Our ministers have visited schools and uh, higher education institutions to, to get an idea of what the, of what the real situation in there is. We will have seminars, we will have workshops with researchers to hear, hear their opinions and their suggestions about what should be done. And we will again have written comments when the draft is ready. And, and <coughs> I expect that there will be a lot, at least the 200 that I mentioned from the previous uh, the plan. Uh, still, uh, shortly about the uh, about the, um, how we are going to structure or the, what, what the plan, this is a draft really about the structure of, of our report. Starting here from the, uh, the main subjects um, and the, uh, the main ob objectives uh, that I already mentioned, then go on to, to situation analysis to, to give a view of, of where, we, where we stand at the moment. And in that we, of course, we use uh, research evidence, um, international comparisons and experiences. Although many people come to Finland to look, look at our system and, and maybe even look up to our system, we also we do not think that we have, the solu we have solutions for, for all the challenges. We also want to learn from the experiences of, of other countries. And so this is very important for us, international comparisons and and learning from, from other countries also. Although it is often uh, very difficult to kind of transfer policies from one country to another, but anyway, you can always learn. And of course, the, the views and opinions of the stakeholders. And based on that, um, we are aiming at uh, well-argued vision and measures. And when we are talking about education policy, really, they, they, the measures, they go under these kind of three, three main uh, titles, steering funding structure, steering for example meaning legislation of course, funding itself is of course very much steering and structures, the network of, of, of schools and, and education institutions, personal structures and so on. And in all that we do, we of course have to take into account uh, the critical uh, drivers of change around us. But it is important to, for us to, to give the view that education and research do not only react to the changes in our, our operational environment, but that, that education and research, they are themselves the drivers of change. So we can, by education and research, we can help uh, for, for our society to go to the directions that we want, want it to. So here you can see some of the, uh, the drivers of change, development of science and technology, transformation of work, growing inequalities, uh, the development of the population structure. This is one of the, one of the, maybe the main issues that we have at the moment. Like, I guess you, as, as we heard, you have also in Latvia, the birth rate in Finland has decreased <coughs> and in recent years quite dramatically actually. And this means that without immigration our population starts to decrease uh, somewhere uh, after 2030. And, and of course immigration as such is a very difficult question politically and of, of course also in practice. Environment, climate change, it is at uh, the moment uh, in our government program, it has a lot of emphasis, uh, democracy, participation, the international system, uh, global responsibility. These are the drivers of change that affect education, but also that we can affect with education. And like I mentioned, the uh, uh, evidence is important in all, all of this, uh, in the whole of this uh, uh, report. This is not to become a study in itself, 
but it is important that we have evidence for our claims, that, that we are not just presenting opinions that people can argue against easily. So we have to have a good base for all of our arguments and claims and the measures that we suggest. So, uh, there are great expectations of, of, on that, and, and actually I'm the one who is coordinating the work in our ministry, so, so this is very interesting and of course very challenging also. I think I will stop in the last, uh, in this one. So, like I have said already, education is developed in partnership in Finland. We try to hear the stakeholders and, and, and use the, the expertise of researchers and researchers and so on. And this also kind of ensures the commitment and, and seamless implementation of the reforms because if, if we can reach kind of at least a, some kind of consensus about the need and the, the way some reform is implemented before it starts, it helps the implementation phase of the reforms. Okay, so I think I will stop here now.